Hey everyone, it's Ryan back on the Syntax Byte. In this video, we're gonna cover doing uh, data cleaning, formatting, and validation on Canadian postal codes in Excel. So I have here a list of Canadian postal codes, uh, most of which are actually uh, valid postal codes, or at least could be uh, valid postal codes, uh, but they're kind of typed in a little bit weirdly. Um, so we have inconsistent spacing and capitalization, and then some of them are just not valid postal codes for whatever reason. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that these postal codes are properly formatted so that we're consistent and that uh, all the letters are capitalized and that there is one space in the middle. Um, and then after that, we can verify if these are actually valid postal codes or not. If you just want to skip to the data validation, feel free to do that. I will have chapters on the video. That being said, just be aware um, that that will only consider a postal code um, that is already properly formatted to be valid. Um, so if you want to validate postal codes that if you know we did some automatic cleanup on them could also be valid, uh, then go ahead and stick around uh, and I'll show you how to do that so that you can check against the cleaned up postal code. So here we have postal codes. Um, yeah, we can see that there's a bunch of differences in spacing and such. So essentially what we wanna do is we want to actually um, make them all uh, uppercase and then remove any spaces and uh, take the left three characters, add a space, and then take the right three characters, and that should put them in a consistent format. So to start off, I'm going to start getting our left uh, three characters, and obviously I need some text that I'm getting that from. What we're going to do is we're going to do a trim, so a trim should get rid of any spaces on the sides, as well as I'm going to do a substitute Um, on upper and then the postal code and I'm going to substitute um, space for no space okay um, and I do this with the trim just because a trim should get rid of if there was a tab or something like that should just get rid of any white space um, on the edges and then of course we'll get rid of the space in the middle as well with the substitute um, and then the substitute will get rid of the spaces on the edges but yeah it's just if there's any other white space like tabs or anything like that trim should take care of all of that as well and then I want the left three characters. Then I want to do a ampersand, so I'm concatenating, I'm adding a space, and then I will essentially do the exact same thing with the right, and we can actually just copy this little bit, paste it, and change out the word left for right. We're gonna take the right three characters. And hit enter, and we can see that what looked like a improperly formatted postal code looks pretty good here. So we have uh, V6B 2W5. Uh, that should be a valid postal code uh, in the province of BC. I we won't actually like connect to the network or anything and check that you know 6B 2W5 uh, is valid, but we will make sure that the first letter is one of the valid letters and that the letters in the middle are actually uh, valid postal code letters. Uh, because there are some letters that are not used in postal codes. So if you receive a postal code with those letters, you know that it's it's invalid. It could not be a valid postal code. So we'll go ahead and extend this all the way down. And we can see, um, you know, for, for an N6JW77 here is not going to be a valid postal code. Um, same with 2T2222, because it's always a letter, number, letter, number, letter, number um, in Canadian postal codes. So we now want to go ahead and make sure that these postal codes are actually valid. Um, so we'll need we'll use a second formula to do that. So I'm going to start by just writing our formula out uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code here because it is quite a lengthy formula. Um, and then we can go ahead and just copy it over into Excel. So we're going to start and we're going to uh, put everything inside of an AND. And so what this is going to do is make sure that all of the functions inside of this and return true. And if they do, then it will return true. And if just one of them returns false, then it will return false. So we know that one of our conditions has failed. So the first condition is that we want to check the length of the postal code and we want that to be equal to seven. There are six characters in the postal code and a space. We just formatted our postal codes to make sure that there is a singular space in the middle. So the length should be seven. That one's fairly simple. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that the numbers are all numbers where we expect them to be. So what we can do is do is number and then we'll take the value of mid, so the middle of the string, we're gonna start, uh, the string is gonna be B1, I'm using B1 because that's where our first properly formatted postal code is. 
and it's going to be position two. And we're going to take one character. And so we'll do that. Um, so we can copy this. There's three characters that need to be numbers. So we can copy this down. And the ones that need to be numbers are character two, character five, and character seven. Okay. So those ones need to be numbers. So we'll verify that those are in fact numbers. The next thing that we want to do is actually verify that there is a correct letter in each of the letter spots. Okay. Um, and so to do that, we're actually going to use uh, a pretty complicated formula here. So essentially, we also want to make this be case sensitive, because remember, we're making sure that this is a not only a valid, but a properly formatted postal code. Um, and so we just cleaned up the formatting so that any that weren't properly formatted could be properly formatted. But now we want to make sure that it's properly formatted. So what we're actually going to do is make sure um, that we essentially are going to use a match to match the letter in uh, a group of letters um, that are valid letters and then make sure that is a number. So I'm going to copy over here the, the formula because it's a lot to write out. But essentially, so for the first for the first le uh, letter, it can be any one of these letters, okay? And then we get a couple more uh, additional letters. I believe we get uh, W and we get Z for uh, the other for the other letters. Um, but we're essentially saying, okay, make sure it's a number if we do a match. Okay, so essentially we're matching true with the output of this exact function. And so this exact function is going to output uh, something of the length of this array. So it's going to check uh, this this mid, which is the first character. So we've used mid to get the first character from the postal code. We're going to check it against all of these letters. Uh, and if we get at least one true back, then match will give us a number. Otherwise, I believe it returns either false or negative one or something like that. Um, and we use exact here rather than just doing a simple match because we want it to be case sensitive. Okay. And then zero here is indicating an exact match. So that's what we do for the first uh, letter. Then for the second and third letters, we essentially have two more letters that we can do. So we uh, add those in there. And then yeah, so that's for uh, character number three, as well as character number six should be a letter. The final thing we need to check is that the mid, uh, the middle character, uh, not just the mid function here, but the actual middle character, which is going to be character four, is actually a space. So we could just say mid b1, character four, take one character is equal to space. And so this will do a case sensitive postcode validation and it will weed out some postal codes that could not be valid based on the letters. Of course, we're not doing any network connection um, and the you know list of valid postal codes changes over time. So it's not really possible to do too much more validation than this in terms of actually validating that that postal code exists, uh, but it will uh, validate whether that postal code could possibly exist under the Canada Post rules today. So with this being done, uh, we can go ahead and copy it. I, we might have to remove the spaces to get it to work in Excel, but let's go ahead and just try. So we'll go ahead and paste this and click enter. And you can see that for the first one, it says that it is true. So we can go ahead and put that all the way down and you see we get a couple of falses here. So N6JW77 is not valid. Of course, it would have to be 7W7 in order to be valid. Um, and then as well here we have T2T222 T2, 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 T2 is not valid as well as O5S2T9. This one is not valid because O is not a valid character um, to start a postal code with. There is no area that has postal codes starting with O. So while this seems to be properly formatted, um, O is not a valid opening character and we know that it is a false postal code. So that is essentially how you do uh, data validation and cleanup on postal codes in Microsoft Excel. If you wanted to delete the ones that are not valid, all you have to do um, is go into filter um, and then you just select false and then you can go and do a delete rows on them and then you just clear the filter and you remove the filter and now we've removed the ones that were false. 
You can also go into here and I believe there is data validation and you can you know, do a custom and add the formula in here. For some reason, when I've tried to do this in the past, it does not let me uh, paste the formula. So I would have to write the whole thing out um, and that is quite complicated, but that will allow you to prevent people from typing in invalid postal codes in the uh, cells themselves. So I hope you found that video helpful. If it was helpful, feel free to drop a like. Actually, please do drop a like on the video. I do a lot much more Excel stuff here on the channel. So definitely go ahead and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.